Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. In today's video, I'm going to show you a deep dive on mailbox auditing and what that looks like within the Security and Compliance Center with Microsoft 365. So before we get into the actual searching of the logs here, I just want to reference the documentation straight from Microsoft. So as you can see here in January of 2019, Microsoft turned on mailbox auditing by default whenever you create new users. Previously, you did have to run some PowerShell commandlets to get that going and define what activity that you wanted to log, but now that is on by default. So owners, admins, and delegates all have certain amount of rights that are pre-allocated to them that start logging the activity of those certain users and we'll get into that here in a second but the main things that we're looking at here is the login types and mailbox actions so you have the owner which is just the mailbox owner you have delegates who could have full access permissions or send on behalf of permissions for that particular user and then you have admin users who just have global admin rights or exchange admin rights to go in and, and actually view this data and perform certain tasks on mailbox items as well too. And then down below here, you start to see all the things that you can actually go in and log from what people are doing within the tenant. So you'll notice some of these are restricted to certain SKUs like E5 field for mail items accessed. But then you have a lot of them here that are in by default and are accessible even on the business level SKUs. Now you'll notice here there's some obviously ones that you want to be proactive with like soft delete, hard delete, or the email messages when that, when that person comes to you within the organization and asks where did my email go. You also might want to do an investigation on if there's a delegate in there, if they were doing send on or send on behalf of. And you also may want to see when they're logging into their mailbox as well too, just for an audit trail of when that was happening. But the thing I wanted to point out here is out of the box, there may be some permissions that you want to audit that aren't actually within the defaults that Microsoft provides. So to take a clear look, let's just dive into a tenant here in PowerShell. And I'll use the new V2 command that's to connect with MFA. But from here, I can begin to run certain commandlets that would allow me to view certain results here of certain mailboxes and see what the properties are for those. So you remember we have audit owner, audit admin, and audit, audit delegates. And I just wanted to show the various differences here. So Mick Ross is a user who we haven't set up any custom permissions for. So this is out of the box. When you run this, it'll just run the list of permissions that they have, like you saw on the previous page there. So this is out of the box, what it does for the audit owner. But I can come in here and modify or view one of the users that I modified. And you'll see I have mailbox login that's being tracked as well too. So again, I would review this list and if there's some that you would want to track, with, with this, there, there may be some that you want to add. And additionally there, if you need to modify it at the owner level or at the admin level or at the delegate level, you can come in here and use the set mailbox commandlets to do so. Delegate, not delegates. And you can decide which permissions that you want to assign or you may define that Microsoft's defaults are all that you need or ever would want to audit. I do like the mailbox login attribute there or the property so I can be able to see when they logged into the mailbox to try to triage certain incidents but it's up to you to see what you want to do so use a combination of this plus this to define what, what it'll be at the user level the tenant level and across all of your tenants potentially. I created these scripts as well too for you online so that you can once you define your taxonomy in that sense of the properties you're going to then be able to define it when you add a user or across a single tenant or across all your customer tenants here so it predefines and you can modify what they're seeing here as far as the script block and when you set the mailbox you set the owner rights here you set the delegate rights and you set the admin rights that you want to track over time 
So you can customize this how you want, but just keep in mind what you have available with the security events here, the properties that you can audit over time. Now the second big piece to this is actually viewing this within the Security and Compliance Center. Within Microsoft's notes here, they say that by default, mailbox audit events for E5 users are available, or in this portal here, only mailbox events for E5 users is again the specific wording, and again it says here, more information, all mailbox audit logging by default is enabled for our organizations. Only users with E5 will return mailbox log audit events. So in looking at this, this is an E5 tenant, and if I want to say, hey, this is in the Security Compliance Center, search audit log, I want to say, hey, I want to go in here and I want to look at the exchange command that I can track, access mailbox, created it, moved it to another folder, deleted it, moved it to the delete folder, signed into the mailbox. I can go ahead and do that, and maybe I just want to do a month time frame. You have you have 90 days of retention by default in here. You can expand it if you do have an E5 subscription, but if you do not, you have to then decide if you want to export it via the UI here or via PowerShell. But as you can see here, you can get a full trail of this within the UI, but again, this is for an E5 tenant. If you're working in a business tenant, which most of us are in the SMB space, you don't have that out of the box with the default policies. Like if you try to run those same searches across this tenant, you wouldn't get them unless I found you run these PowerShell commandlets behind the scenes and actually define custom roles to the user. Maybe you just encompass a few new ones and remove out some. I did that with Bruce Wayne again here, remember? And now I can see the audit log data within the UI versus having to use PowerShell to export that data or view that data. So this is something that's kind of interesting that I just came across by testing, but you may want to do that just to be able to use this interface versus having to use the search unified audit log commandlets here and kind of start running your way through that in the sense of using syntax to be able to export this to CSV for record keeping and things like that. Um, but you can still do that if, if you're you know, custom to PowerShell and you want to keep using that, it's definitely something that you can set up. And this is one that's that's custom. You can say, you know, search, this is the identity of the user as in their UPN prefix, and then the login types owner. You can see the start date and end date that I put in there, and I can say where object, where the operation was a soft delete, and then I can export that to CSV. So again, these will be retained for a 90 day period. The other uh, script that you can try to start to use here, a little bit funky going on, is this, which I'll link as well too. And this is something where you have a little bit more of an interaction than just simply uh, being typing or typing the syntax in there. So it allows me for some fields here that I need to input. Start date. end date. So you can see how it's a little bit more intuitive in the sense of just as prompting you for inputs there and then it returns the results here to the CSV file and I can generate that and open it here and I can start to see the activity here with the subject message of the messages that have action upon them and then you can see the operation so move to the deleted items, hard delete, soft delete update, things like that. So this is another way that you can consume that as well too, is using you know more of a intuitive script here. Back in the security and compliance center here, you can get more metadata on the events that actually occur just by clicking on them here. And this is what you see actually in the output of the CSV as well. But you can click on it there, you can see the affected messages here. You have some goods and paths within the folder and the item itself, and you can see what operations occurred on there and the user ID as well too. And this could help you, one, to triage certain events, but also if you did need to open up a support case, you can reference these logs as well too to 
probably heighten the speed of which you get a resolution on something that you're trying to do. So that's everything I wanted to show for you guys in this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space.